Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mel. I grew up playing outside. And I grew up doing something meaningful, watching movies and TV. I never had cable, and we finally bought a VCR about the same time DVD players hit the market. Throughout our marriage, Mel has sadly missed many of my pop culture references and movie quotes. So it's time to catch up on all the films I missed. Good evening. Go, 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 go. go. And welcome to <laughs> another October night. Ooh. Hey, how's it going, wifey? I love how you're doing hand motions with all of this stuff. Oh, it's because I have, well. in my imagination right now, I have, what is that you would do to make that like whoop, 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 whoop noise? It's a sheet of metal. Sheet of metal, yes, yeah, yes. So you yeah. can hear that in your imagination. I'm, I'm, I'm moving it right now so you can hear that whoop. <laughs> Lightning, thunder, you know. Ah, you said you're setting the mood. I'm really trying to set the tone here. It's working. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So, are you ready for another spooktacular entry in the film lag Oktoberfest? Let's do this. Do you know what we're watching? I have no idea. Really? Really. Oh, wait, let me consult my crystal ball. I was going to say, check it out. You have it sitting there for some reason. Oh, no, it's cloudy. No, I see nothing. It's cloudy with the chance of meatballs. <laughs> no, incorrect. <laughs> we are watching a movie about one of the scariest things that humans are instinctively afraid of. They can't even control it. Where are you going with this? What movie are we watching? We are watching... Arachnophobia. <gasps> Arachnophobia? Yes. Okay, this is exciting. Do you know what this movie is? I know what it is, but I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, although I've had the first, the opening sequence described in great detail to me. Really? So, yes. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm trying to even remember what the opening sequence was. Honestly. The, oh, I, I probably only saw this when it, you know, right around when it came out. I don't think I've seen it since I was a youngling. Ooh. Okay, so I'm really excited because I want to see the movie, yeah. but I'm also relieved that it's not super scary. I think I can handle... Are you sure? Well, uh, spiders don't scare me. I like spiders. Maybe, Maybe you they don't will. know that spiders scare you yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough, maybe. So, what do you know about this movie? Spill it. I've seen it, so you won't oh. spoil anything for me. Oh, well, I mean, I just know that it's about... Actually, I don't know what it's about. All I'm picturing it's about spiders, people who are afraid, someone who's afraid of spiders. All I'm picturing for the beginning sequence of this movie, yeah, is an excerpt from Jurassic Park. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> okay, it's, it's the scene where the lawyer's being pulled on the the raft, and then the guy comes in and goes, "What are you doing out here? Where's Hammond?" And he's like, "I'm a digger." Like, I, for some reason, that's in my mind. I have no idea why. That's bizarro. Yeah. I don't know why that's in your mind. I don't know. So you know nothing about this movie. It I know like. nothing. Okay. Yeah, so this you, is really cool. You want to, you can't guess at the plot, it sounds like. I can't, like, I don't even know. Do you think there'll be a specific kind of creature or animal? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, arachnids. Okay, okay. All right. That could be a, an elaborate trick, though, in the marketing. <laughs> Harry and the Henderson style. I don't know. I, no? No, okay. I'm not falling for this red hair. Fair enough, fair enough, so. fair enough. There's probably no red herrings in this film, I'm being, if I'm being honest. Like, the actual fish. Um, okay, so. Movie poster in Melissa's imagination. You know nothing about this movie, so tell me what the movie poster and the tagline would be. Step into my parlor, <laughs> said okay. the spider to the fly. Okay, okay. Um, and I don't know, some something, I don't know, bodies wrapped up in spider webs or, wow. or I don't know. That reminds me of like a 1960s sci-fi movie, actually. Okay. Like they had like weird aliens from space and stuff would happen and all that. I, Asian of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, okay, yeah, something like that, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Do you want to guess anything else about this film before we go? I don't know. Who directed it? Um, did Tim Burton do the music? I can picture... No, not Tim Burton. Would, Danny Elfman. I was going to say. I can picture Danny Elfman doing music for this. Okay. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I have so many questions. Who's in this movie? Let's go find out. I you, really want to know. You're going to be so pleasantly surprised at a few of these things. So really? Let's go check. Yeah, let's go check it out. Okay, great. The Jennings family has just moved to the small town of Canaima. 
Oh, Ross, smell that air. Oh, God. In search of a simpler life. Want to blow up a bullfrog? Okay. It's the perfect place. Goodbye crime, goodbye grime. Except for one pesty little problem. Come with me and look at the web. The web? I have a terrible fear of spiders. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. It's not irrational. <laughs> Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Jeff Daniels. Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. And John Goodman. Oh, McClintock, infestation management. Ooh, my guy's just a spider. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? I would. False alarm, then lead on. There's no spider here. Every so often, in a little town somewhere, there is a health scare. There's a rumor going around that some kind of spider might have killed Sam Metcalf. Doubtful. Spiders make convenient culprits. <laughs> There's no spider here. I think one of your Venezuelan spiders hitched a ride here. There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Dad, chill out. Just run. Oh! They spread out from a central nest in a web-like pattern and dominate the entire area. So when that happens, this town is dead. Better are caught by private stock. Rock and roll! Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Arachnophobia, Eight Legs, Two Fangs, and an Attitude. Perk up, Lloyd. If we find the spider that did this, you can arrest him. Arachnophobia, a thrill -omedy. Feeling creepy crawly? A little bit. A lot, actually. <laughs> you wouldn't be human if you weren't. Do, are you afraid of spiders now? Like, as in, like, right now? <laughs> or as in, like, in general at this phase of my life? Has your fear increased since watching uh, that, that movie? Well, I will say, given the fact that I grew up in a house with a tarantula in it, <laughs> um... My fear of spiders wasn't quite... I saw that shutter, by the way. You just had a shutter. Um, my fear of spiders is mitigated, I guess. Uh, it was still creepy. Like, yes. This movie did not intensify my fear. All I kept thinking, I think, the first time I saw this was, oh, that looks like Boris, which was the name of the tarantula. <laughs> Tarantulas are the worst. They're hairy. The big, yes. He was beautiful, though. He was black and orange, and he had those orange stripes. He was my uncle's. And when he passed away, my favorite story of <laughs> Boris, I have two stories I'm going to tell you right now. One, favorite story ever. I love the story. Go I'm, on. I'm sleeping, dead sleep. And then my dad runs into the room and shakes my brother and I awake and goes, get up right now. We're like, what? What? <laughs> He's like, we got to find Boris. He's escaped. <laughs> so like, oh my God. we walk out into the living room, like rubbing the sleep out of my eyes. And I totally spotted him right away. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's the I'm, best part. I'm just good at spotting details and things like Easter egg hunts and stuff like that. But anyway, so I spotted him. I just looked up. He was <laughs> on the wall, slowly crawling up the wall, and he was almost to the ceiling. Ooh. Everybody else had been looking like down. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Boris lived another, I don't know, 10 years. And my uncle had a funeral for him. 10 years? Oh, yeah. I think it was 10 years. Holy cow. What was the funeral? Oh, he he got, I don't know if it was like a cigar box or something, but he had like a little coffin for him. Oh my even, gosh. And then he put him in it and he just had a party basically. But Beloved he had Boris, Boris there too. Yes, he loved Boris. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, if anything intensified my fear of spiders, it was that moment in my life versus mm. this movie. Okay. But I could mm. definitely see how this movie would um, be people's worst nightmare for who are afraid of spiders. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What about you? Did it intensify your fear after seeing it? Um, maybe a little bit because the movie kind of like personalized mm -hmm. spiders. What's the word for it? Anthropomorphic. Oh, <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Anthro Arised. I don't remember the word either. Yeah. Yes. So um, the the big spider, mm -hmm. which was is known as big bob big bob um so the big spider big bob known when they were as that when they were filming it yeah they the way they filmed big bob was like big bob had an attitude mm -hmm. and was kind of seeking revenge almost and anytime that the character in the movie the yeah, spider the spider yes. yes like how dare you come to my sanctuary where i've been for millions of years undisturbed yeah and then you come into my place and steal my crew 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. And kill some of my crew. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the spider had like a chip on its shoulder. Totally. And the way they filmed it. Do spiders have shoulders? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, totally. keep going. Keep going. And the way they filmed it, it just has this like revenge look to it. And it, yeah. it really has its own attitude. And whenever you do that for me to a bug or something, that makes me like second guess what they're really thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it allows you to actually go, wait a minute. What if they really are doing this on purpose to get to me? What if they're in the house right now because they want to get me instead of like food or warmth? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. While we're on the subject of favorite spider stories, one of my favorite spider stories is you and I Mm -hmm. and um, some other, some friends were in Africa. Oh, yes. In the rainforest. Yes. And we were doing like a hike tour thing. Yeah. And um, we saw this big spider web like stretched between some trees. Yes. And there was a spider on it that was pretty big. And it was like the size of your hand. Like yeah. if, if I had picked it up, it would have like its body would have been the base of my hand and then its legs, the fingers. Like the, yeah. it totally. It was spread yeah. out. It was like it as was big huge. as your hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my first instinct is to slowly skirt around Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. quietly, keeping an eye on it the whole time, and then walk quickly away. But you and our friend Alan were like, whoa, and you both leaned in face to face. Totally. With like inches away. Yeah. And that's where I think it's going to (laughs) jump. And um, Mm. it didn't jump, and you guys got really great pictures. But that's my favorite spider story. Yeah, I didn't, that, that is a great story. I did do all those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also did them with the knowledge of how spiders jump. <laughs> like they don't, they're not like helicopters that do 360 turns. <laughs> you know, like it, it, it was, I was looking at its back. So it wasn't going to do like a 180 turn and jump on my face. <laughs> That's it would, a good point. <laughs> it would like go straight up or to the side. It wouldn't like, Wah! <laughs> unless it had some weird transformer tilt in its waist or something that I didn't know about. But, um, so, should we talk about the movie? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. Okay. Um, what'd you think? Well, quick summary of this one. Okay, I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved, loved, loved it. Quick summary, this family moves from the big city to a small town to mm-hmm. kind of get away from the rush of life. Yep. Um, one of the... it's Jeff Daniels is the dad, and he's a doctor. He's, he's amazing. Pro- yes. I loved him in this movie. It's probably the first movie I saw him in, actually. He's so good. Yeah. So he's um, he's has a fear of spiders. They find a spider in this old farmhouse that they just moved into. And he's like, yeah. honey, can you come kill the spider, please? Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes back to like from when he was a baby, helpless mm-hmm. in a crib. There was a spider that got on his leg. <laughs> it's a whole traumatic story. Anyway, so um, little do they know that a spider had just hitched a ride from Venezuela the jungle. Or, yeah. mm-hmm. And it's a huge, big, crazy, deadly spider. Mm-hmm. And it just came to their town and set up shop in their barn that they just moved into. Well, the house they just moved into. And it's mated already with a local spider. Yes. <laughs> and it's creating, like, terrible, deadly They met offspring. on the, the farm wide web, by the way. <laughs> That's how they met. That's really good. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. It fits in with the... The jokiness of the movie. The movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then um, it's just, you know, man against bug. Yeah. And the spider Arachnid. starts. Arachnid. It's Thank not a bug. you. Yeah. The spider yeah. starts. Spiders start infiltrating the town, killing mm-hmm. people. And it happens to be like all the patients that he sees yes. as a doctor, like get yes. bit by the spider. So there's a bit of like mystery and, and weirdness following him around. But it is. Um, yeah, I think they it call him Dr. Death down. or something like that. Yeah, the the kids, kids in school start calling him that. calling you Dr. Death. Yeah. Oh, honey, I'm not. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, the thing I like about this movie is how playful it is. Mm-hmm. It's uh, like it has all those lovely moments where, I mean, you, you see a kid going to get a baseball and the spider's like right there and you're like, is he going to get it or not? Yeah. And they also kind of mess with you because they take out some people you wouldn't expect would get bitten by the spider, like a few. So you're kind of like, it gives that nice no one's safe kind of like feel to it. Mm-hmm. I remember like when we were watching the end of it with the showdown, you were like so nervous that Jeff Daniels, the like hero of the film, was, was. going to get bit and, and die. Yeah. Yeah. So that just tells you how good they were doing about making it. So 
characters, you know, scream effect, like, you know, anybody is a could be a victim. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. But uh, the funniest part, I think, about this movie was what they tried to coin it as, which was a thrillomedy. 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 <laughs> a thriller comedy. A thrillomedy, <laughs> which I have never heard that term before or since. It didn't stick uh, it around. It did not stick around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff Daniels, when he was um, when he got the part, he said he was kind of scared of spiders and mm -hmm. wouldn't be acting a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but nice. then in other interviews, he was like, oh, you know, they're okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just the ones that stand up and hiss. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, yes, that's fair. Which I agree. Yes. That's terrifying. John Goodman, on the other hand, he wasn't like phased at all. He was like, I don't have any problem. We see eye to eye. Well, <laughs> my eyes to their however many eyes they have. He, he was, was way more chill. He was really funny. You can tell he's more chill in yeah. the movie. Um, he's an exterminator who gets mm -hmm. called in um, when... I yeah. Go ahead. No, I keep going. Keep going. Sorry. He gets called in when Jeff Daniels and his wife, like he's in the basement and realizing that his wood is like rotting mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. which is a homeowner. You're like, no, that's the worst. That was feeling. one of the scariest parts Ugh. of the movie for me. Yeah. He's like using a um, air hammer. What is it? It's, it's a, a nail gun. A nail gun. <laughs> he was hammer. using an air hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed like a possible I want to buy an air hammer now. I'm going to like look for it. It's like thrillomedy. That's yes, going to catch it's on. It's a thrillomedy air hammer <laughs> of a ride. He's using it to like shoot nails up from the basement into the ceiling. And yes. then you see his wife standing above it and they're yeah. shooting up right yes. by her feet yes. through the floor. Yeah. I love that part. Especially yeah. her deadpan reaction. Yeah. She's just so chill about it. Yeah. yeah. I'll call the exterminator. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. enter John Goodman. And he's he's really funny. I tried to figure out what he was doing with that character as we were watching it this time. Mm -hmm. As a kid, all I remembered about John Goodman was, he's so awesome in this movie. That's what I remember, like, from my perspective of seeing that as a kid. Okay. This time, I mean, he is awesome. He's got the whole deadpan, like, nothing phases him. There are spiders that could kill you with a single bite, and he's just like, rock and roll, let's go. <laughs> like, that's his character. Yeah. But- the accent he used, and he kind of did like, I don't even know what his accent was. It reminded me of like of a cross between like uh, a John Belushi type thing going on and the <laughs> like Bill Murray and Caddy, Caddyshack, mm -hmm. where he kind of talked like this and he could loosh, 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 loosh. But it was nowhere near as It like, wasn't that campy. deep. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. So I, anyway, I was trying to figure it out the whole time I was watching it this time. He actually, it's interesting you thought it was an amalgam because he mm -hmm. used like two characters like mm -hmm. that he based it on. Mm -hmm. People from his life. Like he sure. knew an exterminator. Okay. So he was kind of basing the character on an exterminator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also um, on a high school science teacher <laughs> that he was using those two people from his experience to make the character. I always love hearing that about actors. It's just the, you know. <laughs> The different things that they witness in their lives that kind of like get sprinkled into their performances. It's always fun. After I knowing that, like picturing him as a science teacher in that role, like totally made, makes sense to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, kids could be blowing themselves up and like, turn the beaker off, please. Like <laughs> non-phased, non you know. I love it when he's he's mm -hmm. in how someone else calls him. Oh, I wasn't there. Was the coach called Yeah, him it was too? the coach. Yeah. Right. And so he's in the bathroom mm -hmm. like looking around the toilet mm -hmm. which you can only do by bending down yes. on your knees yes. and like hugging the toilet so yeah. he's looking around he can't find the spider but you see it because yeah. like the camera is behind you. it yeah mm -hmm. um and then he turns around and he he just kind of stands up and then sits down on the toilet on the seat yes to talk to the guy yeah <laughs> he's like there's no spiders here yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um the way that they uh, the spiders in this movie, too, like, they were real. Most of them were real spiders. Yeah. And they were, like, they were very careful not to hurt any of them as well. Like, one of the scenes they did, they, like, hollowed out. There's a scene where John Goodman, like, sprays them. You know, it's the first time he's, like, finding one to, like, get. Yeah. He sprays them. They had a fake one for that, of course. But, like, literally, there's a scene, like, they show his boot. You see a spider moving and the boot crushed the spider, right? Yeah. They, like, hollowed out the boot. So he stepped on the spider and it curled into a ball and it was under his heel, right? Mm -hmm. For that shot. And then the next shot, they just swapped it out. But they just, no spiders were harmed in the making of this <laughs> film. I just thought that was crazy. Aww. It's cool. The lengths that Hollywood I mean, used to go to, like, I don't know if they would do that anymore. No, it's just CGI. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. 
they just have lots of animators trapped in cubicles to make those you mm-hmm. know for hours and hours and hours so speaking of cgi mm-hmm. i learned something really nerdy and cool about bring this movie. it did you okay bring it let's see if i know this is like one of the earliest uses of cgi there's okay. one shot in this movie that they used CGI. Do you know which Can one Can I was? guess which shot it is? Please, guess. I'm going to guess it's the shot where you see the external of the house and it's covered in thousands of spiders. That's the shot. How did you... Is, is that just... A- when I was watching it this time, I was like, that's got to be CGI. There's no <laughs> way they could do that in real life. Okay, but to put it in like the timeline of reality... Yeah. This that was in 1990. 1990. That was one of the earliest uses, yeah. and then three years later, Jurassic Park. Exactly. Isn't that crazy to think about? It iteration happened so fast. Like yeah. yeah, Tron was a few years before this, which used some computer animations. And if you think about the computer animations they did in there, Tron. In Tron. Wow. Yeah. I'm saying specifically computer animations versus CGI too, because it's very you know Atari esque. But yeah. um, speaking of Jurassic Park. <laughs> Where are you this going is, with this? This, this film was by Amblin Entertainment, which yes. is Steven Spielberg's production company, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember as I was watching it this time, I was like, oh my goodness, this is an homage to Jurassic Park. But then I realized this is 1990 and Jurassic Park is 1993. So... Jurassic Park is an homage to this movie. Yeah. Like the opening sequence of them flying through the South American jungle with the helicopter and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's even waterfalls and everything. Like it's totally, totally Jurassic Park. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I told you in the preamble that Mm -hmm. someone had described to me in great detail the opening of the movie. Mm -hmm. It's totally wrong. What was it? It must be another movie. Okay. (laughs) Someone had told me that there's like the scene where you see mm-hmm. a town mm-hmm. or maybe it's a house. Oh, geez. That's a big difference. Oh, I think it's a house. And then there's like this humongous spider walking on it. Okay. And then you think it's real, but then you kind of zoom out and it's like a it's like a, a dollhouse or something. Okay. Okay. With like a tarantula. Okay. And I always thought that was how arachnophobia started. But that's not arachnophobia. <laughs> it's not arachnophobia at all. Because the opening sequence of this <laughs> was like. Way, epic. It yeah. was epic and wonderful yes. and like took a long it was like a it's like a scroll nut scroll nut zippers intro yes it was like a long intro it just took its they have time. like the longest well, song intros and yes. so this was like this long development of the plot okay so what- they, they really wanted to get a solid foundation to the start also yeah. more jurassic park overtones of like the dig site you know yes. with, with dr grant Totally got that vibe yeah. with what they were doing as well. You wonder what movie that was? Yes, tell me. I honestly don't know the answer. <laughs> but if I were on Jeopardy or playing a quiz game, yeah. I would guess Eight Legged Freaks. That oh. just sounds like Eight Legged Freaks to me. Okay. Now I have to go watch the opening sequence of that movie to see what it is. I was going to, if I were on a quiz show, I would have guessed Arachnophobia 2. <laughs> <laughs> Or solid. Well, actually, you would have guessed the arachnophobia and been wrong. I but. know, but if I know, if knowing, yes, 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 know, yes. know what I know now. Mm-hmm. But um, or it doesn't is it Beetlejuice? Does Beetlejuice start that way? Oh, I'm trying to remember what the op- I, I thought the opening sequences of Beetlejuice were just establishing the like northeastern countryside town. But I, it's been mm-hmm. so long since I've seen the opening sequence of mm-hmm. Beetlejuice. That's one of those I saw a million times from like the um. Waiting room scene on. Whenever I was flipping through stations, there, that was the scene that always happened to be on. Okay. It's when Beetlejuice is in the afterlife in the waiting room and there's like yeah. dead football players and stuff like that. Back to the movie we're discussing. Yeah, sure. Iraq, mm-hmm. no phobia. No phobia. Um, in that opening beautiful helicopter ride, mm-hmm. the photographer who ends up like being the one who gets bit by the spider and the spider, yeah. you know, Hitchhike, hitchhikes a ride. Yes, vampires him too. He, he's like, he's on the helicopter and he's riding with the door open and his leg kind of mm-hmm. hanging, hanging out. And mm-hmm. I love that, mm-hmm. but it made me wonder, like, do people really ride in helicopters like that? I always wanted to do it. I love that. I they, love that scene. Yeah. I love that I happening. Mean, but does that actually, do people do that? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Oh, that's so cool. I've seen enough war movies to know they're definitely hanging out of the side of helicopters when they fly. <laughs> but those are movies. We this need to ride a, a helicopter movie. and see if okay. we can do it. Well, I mean, in 1990, you would probably be able to do that if you were in <laughs> South America and chartered a helicopter 
and were able and you were just owning it. You know what I mean? For the day, <laughs> you would probably be able to do that. Yes. I don't know about nowadays that, you know, they probably had seatbelts on and all that good stuff. But nowadays, I don't think that would happen nowadays. That'd be pretty rough. It's boss. It would be boss. You'd need a lot of boss cash in order to get that to happen. <laughs> um, What was your favorite part of this movie? Do you have one or a few? I have a few. I've mentioned a couple things that mm-hmm. I liked, you know, flying in a helicopter with your leg hanging out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I really liked the use of the barn mm. and the big web. I love barns anyway. Yeah, so sure anytime do. there's a barn, I'm happy, mm-hmm. um, especially with a hayloft. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, but like it really built the intensity of the film. Mm-hmm. And that was like intentional. So like you knew the the big Bob, which actually... I thought it was a woman spider up until oh. I realized okay. they called it Big Bob. Anyway, you knew the big spider was in there and you saw the big webs and it kept getting more webbier. Yeah. That's a word. And yeah, um, the suspense of that. And then finally, like, you know, at the end, like the things that dropped down off of the web, the whole, the whole thing. That was my favorite. I loved that building. That was my favorite. I really liked, um, well, first off, like thinking that Bob was... Bobette or Bobby, whatever. Um, <laughs> like that tracks with how ginormous the egg sack was. Yeah. Because like they try to narratively, they try to make you believe a common house spider, which is like, I don't know, two, like two inches big tops, mated with a ginormous spider and then gave birth to this like the literally the egg sack was like what, the size of a watermelon? It was <laughs> a cantaloupe, maybe. I'd go cantaloupe. It was there. probably a cantaloupe, yep. yeah. And so that's just like the logistics of that are just crazy. Like, I don't even know. Anyway, that's where the I have to let go to the movie magic because the nerd in me is like, <laughs> well, the structure of the spider's body wouldn't be able to accept. <laughs> what were some of your favorite parts? Uh, really weird things this time as an adult, like <laughs> the fact that Jeff Daniels really wanted a wine cellar. I really loved that. And I really wanted him to have his wine cellar. Don't you just. I yeah. really did. That's such a adult thing to think while you're watching a movie too. It <laughs> sickens my younger self. But at the end when he's throwing and smashing the bottles of wine, does, yeah. didn't it break your heart? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, no. And he even, the- he even stops and he's like, no, not the whatever. And he like doesn't <laughs> throw that one. His life is in danger. There's this giant spider coming at him. And he's still like, no, I can't do the blah, blah, blah. I like all the absurd characters like the guy who works at the morgue Mm -hmm. he's the mortician Mm -hmm. and he's always eating yes (laughs) he's coming in with a full sandwich no one else can stomach anything they're seeing but Mm -hmm. he's just you know holding a big bag of chips Uh uh-huh i also liked the what i don't know how better to describe him as the arrogant jerk professor like (laughs) <laughs> he, which totally reminds me of a band teacher I had. Oh. He was just like, I know better than everybody else and I'm amazing. <laughs> and here is how things are. And it, it just really reminded me of one of my teachers. I loved how the the whole thing is that Jeff Daniels went to this town to take over a doctor's practice. And then mm-hmm. he got there and the doctor was like, I've decided not to retire. Yeah. <laughs> like they didn't need to do that. You know, yeah. but that was just so quirky and weird. And it made it like. Just, just quirky is the right word for it. It made it really interesting. Lots the, of weird characters. Yeah, this movie is a good example of how it's a. This is a monster movie. You know, there's yeah. a monster, and the monster is gonna like take over the town, and you kill it with fire. Yes. that was a big thing. It yes. reminded me of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Carpenter's yeah. thing. Yeah, and uh, it's a monster movie, and monster movies can be anything from like a B movie or a C movie. <laughs> to one like this, where you're like actually like invested in the characters, you the the scares are good. It's told in such a way that you're not bored. Like it was just solid filmmaking, honestly. Mm-hmm. And like Frank Marshall, the director, he he really wanted to like um, model it kind of after like the birds, yeah. Hitchcock's The Birds, where yeah. you know he he we I saw this in a featurette too, where he's talking about how he just like. You want to scare people, but you also want them laughing to keep it kind of in balance and not just scare them to death, which is a very 90s thing, I think. Nowadays, I feel like movies are like, no, we want to scare you and then reside in your nightmares forever. (laughs) Um, I think you know which ones I prefer. (laughs) Yeah, I I think I do. Uh, And for me, it's always been a test of like, can a movie actually scare me? 
And lately, movies that have been made, there have been a few that I'm like, that actually creeped me out a bit. I've noticed that about you. Yeah. Are you, is it because you're getting older? I don't <laughs> I don't know if it's... I, I wouldn't think so. Usually, like, the older you get, the more things you experience, the harder it is to blah, to feel something, whatever. Or so, the older you get, the more you hold on to something. Or That could be. Mm-hmm. Wow. Has this become a therapy session right now? <laughs> this is just like with him and the spider fear. <laughs> Uh, what, what's happening? I don't even know what's going on. I I love that he faces his fear and he has to be the one to like, yeah, to you know, that is really cool. Take um, on the spider at the end. The mom too in this movie, she she did such a good job that you'll see this throughout certain movies. There's these archetypal moms, and I don't know, maybe it's just because of the age in which I saw it, but she did like such a good job at just being like that. Even keeled, no nonsense mom, which totally described moms of the 80s and 90s. Yep, exactly. They were like, all right, go outside, try not to break a leg. See you later. <laughs> Be back before dark. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. it. That's all you need to do. Very different from the parenting experience of nowadays. <laughs> well, when you have a cellar full of wine. That's true. I mean, why why worry? Just, got, just relax. Just Let have another bottle of wine. That's true. That's very, very true. <laughs> Would you like to know how they cast the spiders for this film? Absolutely. Okay, so they wanted to, for the smaller spiders. Yes, yes. They wanted, um, they had some things that they wanted the spiders to be able to do. So they had an Olympics, a spider Olympics. (laughs) And they had all the top runner, like, species of spiders. Yeah, yeah. And the ones that won, they got the gold medal. They could um, walk across a thin wire, Mm -hmm. walk up glass, walk sideways, walk upside down, and they were easy to work with. They were also completely harmless. Yeah, there were New Zealand spiders, right? They're from New Zealand, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, then they kind of are similar to crabs, I think, which is why their legs were bigger or something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. And they used heat Mm -hmm. to control their behavior Ah. because they'll walk away from heat. Mm -hmm. And so they were using like, um, you know, hair dryers and like Mm -hmm. little heaters to kind of try to control where they would go. To wrangle them. But that's like, I mean, it didn't really work all the time. So a lot of this was like led by the spiders. Uh, In the scenes too at the end where they go where the spiders and the climax are like in the house all over the walls and stuff. That would have been crazy. Yeah. Like some of that was some of that CGI or was that all practical? That was all practical. I, there were a lot. There's this like um, on YouTube, there's like this VHS recording mm-hmm. of a behind the scenes mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it showed like all of these like um, helpers yeah. collecting each spider individually in these little cups. Wow. And like kind of, you know, like brushing them into the cup and then setting them where they need to be. I really want to know what happened to them. After all this was done, because I think they got them from New Zealand. I don't think they could send them back. They couldn't send them back. Yeah. No, they couldn't. It was like a quarantine thing. Yeah. Um, Which, okay, we can take them here, but you can't take them back. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Don't get me started on all that stuff. (laughs) But yeah, like I'm, I'm imagining, and I don't know this at all. I just imagine they found, I don't know, a sanctuary, a zoo or something, and just dumped them all into a bin. That's a happy thought. And maybe it looked like a barn. Yeah, maybe it looked like a barn. <laughs> uh, so if there was going to be a movie about an animal that was infesting a town and you were the main character and had to overcome it, but it's not a typical animal mm-hmm. that you would normally be afraid of. I already know what it would be. Oh, what would it be for you? Slugs. <laughs> I hate slugs. I hate them. There's. It all started. Wow. Um, you look so passionate right <laughs> now. Wow. Okay. Okay, what's the name of the, the cartoon that we love with Huey, Dewey, and Louie? DuckTales. DuckTales. Okay, the original DuckTales cartoon. Yes, yes. There's an episode where Huey, Dewey, and Louie are like stuck on top of this tall rock. Uh-huh. And there's slugs that are sliming their way up to them, up this tall cavernous rock. Wow. And you know they're going to die and they're slimy. Uh-huh. And now even in, as an adult, I find enormous ones two inches long yes, in the garden. Yes. And I, I, I hate it. I you squish still... them and it... It haunts me. It doesn't I help you? It. That's not overcoming your fear, squishing them? No? No, because they're so gross. Like, actually touching them is like, okay. Wow. That would be... Uh, thanks a lot, Disney, <laughs> for creating a phobia on my wife. Yet another customer scarred. 
<laughs> okay, um, what about you? No, first off, that yeah. reminds me of in San Diego. I used to walk everywhere when we lived there and <laughs> snails. There were snails all over my morning walk. Like mm. they would just be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I loved them. I thought they were great. <laughs> they were so cool looking. They just look like little aliens. Uh, okay, what would my infestation be? I would probably pick, um, man, oh, it would be groundhogs. Oh, yeah, it would. Because I hate <laughs> groundhogs. Your eyes just squinted. <sighs> and like, I think your your um, heart rate just went up. I hate anger. them with such a passion. Yes. They would just be slow. It would be such a boring movie because they would be slowly burrowing under everyone's <laughs> foundations. And then insurance adjusters would be coming and estimating the damages and, <laughs> and houses would just slowly be falling apart. And But it would be a boom for the economy because then the builders would have to rebuild things. But you could have a wine cellar play into it, too, because it's like in the basement. That's true. Mm -hmm. And I could throw I could chuck bottles at the woodchucks. Yes. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, what, if any, messages do you think were in this film? Um, face your fears. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like Jeff Daniels, he did a good job. Like his character did a good job of yeah. like doing what needed to be done. And mm -hmm. <laughs> there's the part where he goes into the basement. It happens because he falls. He falls off of the yeah. stairs and he falls through the floor down into the basement. That's probably the craziest stunt in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he's like a wine rack falls on him, but mm -hmm. he doesn't give up and he has to kill. It's like do or die. It's either me or the spider. He because just does one it. bite killed you. One bite. In this movie. So um yeah, it's just like take your fear and smash it and then use a nail gun thing. <laughs> air hammer. Use an air hammer. Don't forget about the air hammer. <laughs> that sounds like a basketball term. It does. Um so if you're wondering what I think the message of this film is, yes, you're go on. always so curious. Uh, the phrase roll with the Henry just pops in my head. <laughs> like there are so many curveballs that are thrown people throughout this movie and mm -hmm. they just got to get on with it and move on. You got to roll with the Henry. Hmm. Oh, my other one is don't go to the jungle. <laughs> don't go to the jungle. Yeah, that's that's probably a message in a lot of movies. Yeah. Don't go where you're not supposed to go. <laughs> oh, that looks interesting over there. Let's go check it out. No, don't. Or maybe don't lean into a spider web in the jungle. Uh, that one's okay. That one's okay? That one feels okay. Okay. Especially if you have the context to know everything's fine. Double standard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I did go into the jungle. I did go into the jungle. <laughs> oh, I didn't even follow my own advice. That was younger me. I, I Now I'm older, so. Totally different. Yeah. Um. We didn't talk about the worst thing about this movie. And what? you and I both agreed about what the worst thing about this movie was. Mm. The soundtrack, the yeah, score. Yeah. It doesn't did really match. Not feel, it did not age well. It did not match. It felt way too. I think they did it intentionally to make it feel lighter and not as scary. Mm -hmm. But it just made it feel like a sitcom to me. Like, or something like that. Yeah, it didn't it, totally line up. Yeah, it, it felt a bit mismatched for the film, which is crazy because, you know, the score really grounds you. That says a lot about the story making, though, if we still felt the way we did about the film, even though the score was taking us out of that. Yeah, like, totally. That still speaks volumes to it, in my opinion. I but, read that, like, a lot of composers were booked. Oh, <laughs> I don't. So, I don't even. I don't want to look up who it is because otherwise I'd have to apologize. Uh, so well, the director in what I read, he was he was happy with who they got. So okay, he seemed like a happy go lucky guy. Yeah, so that's yeah. good. But just yeah. watching it now, it didn't seem to like line up. Yeah, I mean, with for the theme the, and story, that's that it made it feel very dated to me. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. the fashion, all the clothes do that too. But like the soundtrack made it feel very like nineties, late eighties, like to me. That was the part that made it feel the most dated to me. Like mm -hmm. even the clothes and cars and stuff, the house, like yeah. none of that felt extremely dated. Yeah. Yeah. The lack of internet is always interesting in cell phones whenever you watch a movie. <laughs> I really liked this movie. I did too. This was a great Halloween pick for sure. I uh I hope it I hope it um, amped up the thrill level a bit for you. Yeah. And we're going to see maybe what happens next week. Okay. All, All right. right. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>